So before I had an agent, the idea of an agent was like this sort of glowing like spirit <laughs> that I was sort of reaching for in, in the void. Um, you know, everyone is really eager and excited to get an agent. And so I didn't really have a great sense of what agents did, except you needed them to like do stuff. That was sort of what I understood them to do. Um, once I actually got an agent, it turned out that the relationship um, is quite wonderful and, you know, sort of works both ways. I think people often think that like writers need agents, but also agents need writers because that's like where they get their money from. Um, so there's like this really kind of beautiful symbiosis and working with an agent, um, I get to show him work and he gets to sort of help me be my advocate, clarify a lot of legalese for me that I just know nothing about, just sort of give me the ins and outs of the industry, which is something that I don't really know much about, um, and just sort of be there for me as I go through various steps of my career. Um, so yeah, that, I'd, I'd say that was the big shift for me. It became like a concrete. Okay, thank you. The thing that you said, Sarah, about uh, uh, the way that you go about it, the two ways that, um, that the Googling works mm -hmm. on it is, first of all, to go to Publishers Marketplace, which is the single most useful uh, website and database for it, which has listings and contact informations for all the agents that you would be looking for, and also the deals that they've represented. And you know, doing a deep dive into Publishers Marketplace will give you a lot of direction in terms of where you might want to look. The next thing is when you do do that deep dive, to look at the agent's website and do find what their specifications are. Because I look on Twitter sometimes and some agent friends of mine whom I follow and who follow me, they and I have completely different specifications. I don't want a synopsis in my, in my queries. He will not accept one without a synopsis. You know, and, and you see that and it's very important to get it right um, because it just shows that we, we're looking for people who, who are looking for us in particular, not just looking for uh, an agent, but one who really thinks that, that you could be a fit, because it has to be a fit. Oh. <laughs> Trying to describe the novel was incredibly hard for me for a long time, because I didn't understand something really basic that I want to share with you. I thought I had to say something about where the character ended up. I thought that any kind of a description really had to include a lot of plot. And um, it was actually an agent named Marie Lamba, who I, I run a space called The Word Studio, and sometimes I have people come do workshops, and she gave a workshop. Um, on queries, and she said, she didn't put it in this way, but what I took from it was basically it's X plus Y equals question mark. So, you know, X character in Y situation, and what's gonna happen, right? So you don't actually have to tell what happens. Um, in fact, it's bad to. What you wanna do with a query is create a cramp in the stomach. You want to manipulate the reader's physiology to make them want to continue, right? That is your only job with your pitch. Josh, and I'm going to interrupt and just because the, this term, you know, offer of representation, it's been on the table, it's in the room. Do we, does everybody really understand what that means? What does it really mean to, to offer representation? What are the legal ramifications? What is that? It, it means that... Um, I am your agent. It means there, there are certain fiduciary duties that I have to the author. Um, it lays out what, um, what pers you know, how I get paid and how you get paid. Um, it also um, says, and it's, it's very, you know, I, I'm very specific about this, that it is not for one project because it is for my clients' careers. I don't take clients who have other agents for their nonfiction if I'm doing their fiction or vice versa. Um, I'm, I'm looking to, um, to work with somebody on any project they might have to do until the time that we agree um, that we are not working together. Um, different agencies have different guidelines on that. I do have a, an agency author agreement um, that spells that out very clearly. Um, I have worked at one place that had a six-page, single-space, six-point type one. I had one that did it based on a handshake. Um, when we started our own agency, we decided to be in between and have something that we think is very clear. Um, but it does mean that 
once you agree and sign the uh, the agency agreement that you're not going to go to somebody else. Um, uh, I, I will say, um, and this is a thing that I think people get confused about, you are never paying your agent. Like, right. money goes from the publisher through the agent, they to take you. their cut to you. Correct. If an agent is like, I'll take you on if you pay me this money, that is not a legitimate situation. That is a scammer. Right. And that is that is against the Association of Author Representation, uh, Author Representatives guidelines. So that's not so much like, how are they not for you, but like, if there's somebody who's actually not a good agent, period. Mm -hmm. But also I feel like there's this element of, like you have to have like a, a sense that you, ha that you have a relationship that makes you feel satisfied. So I had a really good friend who got signed with an agent who has represented some pretty big names and they never communicated. Like the agent never got in touch with her and there was this ongoing situation where like she was never hearing from her and it was very stressful and eventually she, I don't know, broke up with her. Like, you know, she dissolved the relationship. Um, and I think that does happen sometimes if, sometimes I think with like agents, like sort of where, or where you feel like, are you like a big fish in a small, like where you sort of fit in the sort of, ecosystem of the agent's um, sort of mm -hmm. client list. Um, and how you feel, like the comfort level that you feel is gonna just depend on like, do you mind like just sort of working on your own and just sending them work occasionally or do you want somebody who's like a little more hands-on? Um, I also like, my agent does not do a lot of editing on my work and I actually really like that. Mm -hmm. I don't like, I don't, I'd rather work with an editor for my, my work. And so I like that my agent does not insist on like putting his fingerprints all over everything that I write. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's just, but that's for me. Other people really want that like editing relationship with their agent. And so if you want that, you would pick a, not, not my agent, like a different agent. So it just sort of depends on like what you want and like what works best for you as a writer. And then there was a second part of the question about, you know, what makes for a good agent. And of course, yeah, you can all talk about that. But I think there are a couple of obvious, but often overlooked things. Honesty. Um, and uh, in that world, there you have to be very careful about that. Um, and uh, transparent communication and enthusiasm for you and for the work that you do.